Today, I'm going to show you an easy recipe for bisteak or carne en cebollado. So good. For the marinade, I am going to show you what I'm going to put in this. Already, I have a tablespoon of garlic paste. You can use about four cloves of crushed garlic. That's about what I would use. I'm going to add a little bit of olive oil, maybe like a tablespoon. I'm going to grind up uh, a teaspoon of cumin seeds with black peppercorn in the mix, a teaspoon of Mexican oregano, a teaspoon of salt, and a tablespoon of this pickling liquid from the jalapenos. You could actually just use a teaspoon of apple cider vinegar mixed with water, like a tablespoon of water. Um, the ratios of these ingredients are to your preference. If you want it to be brinier, add more vinegar or pickling liquid. I kind of eyeball things, but that's a pretty good place to start. So let me go ahead and start grinding this up. Okay, so just teaspoon. It's a mix of black peppercorns and ground cumin seeds. If I want a little more cumin seed to black peppercorn ratio, just, you know, maybe don't have this mixed. <laughs> this came in a mixed bag. And then just, there we go, a teaspoon of that. And I'm just going to start crushing it and just working it in my mortar and pestle. Okay, so here's what I'm working with. So now I'm just going to take, I'll do like two teaspoons of that. Going with some olive oil like a tablespoon. My pickling liquid, like a tablespoon or so. Let's give that a mix. This is going to be the marinade for the meat. You can give it a taste. And like I stated earlier, I want to reiterate, I think traditionally a mixture of vinegar and water is what my my uh, grandparents would use. My grandfather made this a lot and he, he would use vinegar and water in the mix with a lot of this. But then when my, my aunts and uncles <laughs> started making it, they liked to use the, the pickling liquid from the jalapenos because they just, you know, switched it up. So there's a little story behind that. But yeah, vinegar and water into the mix works. Okay, so that's good. So here I have thinly sliced or cut pieces of, this is beef top round steak. This is cut really thin. And as you can see, typically this is a tough piece of meat, but because it's thin and we're gonna marinate it for about an hour, it'll be tender by the time that we cook it. And this is a close to um, one and three quarters pound of beef. This recipe is probably good for about two pounds of thin sliced beef steak. And again, this is like the top round cut. So I'm just going to give this a little mix and I'm going to go in with my clean hands and just combine everything. I added a little bit more of that pickling liquid. So like I stated earlier, when you make your marinade, adjust it. You can adjust the ratios. A lot of you that cook a lot, you know your palates, you know what you like. What I'm going to do to these pieces is just cut them in half. You probably could do this on a cutting board before you marinate them, but I like to do it with my kitchen shears and just like the larger pieces, cut it into thirds. It just makes it a lot easier to, to cook and plate. I'm gonna put this in the fridge, cover it with cling film and let it marinate for about an hour to an hour and a half. Okay, so my meat has marinated for an hour and a half. I also let it set on the counter for 20 minutes to take the chill off. And over here, I've already started to preheat my pan. I'm gonna add some cooking oil. And now the meat. So here you can see a lot of the natural juices have rendered and 
it's not really sizzling now it's kind of at a simmer and that's okay this is just going to uh, help to get this meat because this is a tough cut of meat it's going to help get the meat tender and like I said it's going to take time so this is already like the second stage where the juices have rendered and now it's kind of like at a boil and that's okay so what I'm going to do I'm going to cover with a lid and now I'm going to lower the heat and just let that simmer until the juices have evaporated and it starts to sizzle again. It's going to take like 10 to 15 minutes. I'm going to make Mexican style red rice to go with this, arroz rojo. Um, and I'm going to toast long grain rice with a little bit of oil. And I rinse this under cold water and I kind of let it dry out. So it's not super wet. So all I'm going to do is toast this. I've done several videos on Mexican style rice, different ways to make it. This is just another way. And I will link a full recipe video for this that goes into more detail. I'm just going to toast this rice. Okay, the rice is now toasted. I'm going to add some fresh onion. I'm going to go into the pan and give that a saute. The rice has toasted very well. I had to lower the heat. You don't want to burn your rice. I'm also going to add, this is a combination of cumin seeds and black peppercorn. I'm just going to add all of it. It's like a teaspoon. Here I have my fresh garlic going in. I don't want to burn anything, so I'm going to work quick. One tablespoon of chicken bouillon powder. Whoops, don't make a mess. This is eight ounce can of tomato sauce. I'm ultimately going to add two cups of water, but I want some of that residual tomato sauce. There we go. Give that a mix and bring that up to a simmer. Turn up the heat again. I'm gonna cover with the lid, uh, cover with a lid and let that come up to a simmer. Now that the rice is simmering and kind of boiling, I'm going to turn the heat down on low and just let it gently simmer for about 18 to 20 minutes or until the liquid has evaporated and the rice is cooked. Don't lift the lid. So it has been simmering gently in its own rendered natural juices for about 13 to 15 minutes and it still has juice in there. So I'm gonna lift the lid now I'm going to crank up the heat. I really want the, the liquid to evaporate. I'm just going to kind of move it around. Now it's time to add the onion. And I'm going with two types of onion. I had one medium to large yellow onion going in. And you can see it's starting to brown again starting to sizzle in the car, and that's what I'm looking for. By the way, I'm also warming up, it's already boiling. I had leftover charro beans. If you want to, if you want easy charro beans or, you know, the longer from scratch made uh, way to make charro beans, I have two recipe videos that'll help you. I will link them in the description below, but I'm going to be serving charro beans uh, alongside my, uh, meat today along with the rice that's still cooking. So I'm just going to keep sauteing this for another five minutes or so. So here's what I like to do to get the meat like a deeper color and again it also helps to make it tender. It's It has browned, the onions are in, so what I'm going to do, I have, let's see how much is this, like a half cup. I'm going to go with a half cup of water into the pan. Actually I want to make sure that I turn the heat up. And what this is going to do 
is any charred pieces of the meat, once the water hits it, it picks up the fond and it just adds a nice brown color to the meat. And I only added a half cup of water to this. And I'm gonna let that simmer and stew a little bit more. And then we're almost done. And I'm not gonna cover the lid. I'm just gonna let it simmer and cook. And that'll just pick up fawn from the pan and kind of just disperse some of that charred color to the meat. Okay, so here we have, I have like two or three scallions that I just cut into long pieces. And this is still simmering. So the name of the game here is you're using a tough cut of meat, you wanna make sure that it's tender. So if that means you have to add more liquid and let it simmer and stew to become tender, you know, do so. So now I'm gonna add my scallions. That is optional. Just with the other onion, you know, you're good. But I'm gonna let this saute and simmer. Let me crank up the heat once again, just a little bit. And after about five minutes, this is done and I'm gonna serve. My rice is done already and I never lifted the lid. I just shut off the heat and I let it set with the lid on for about 10 minutes before serving, before fluffing and serving. And my beans have simmered and reheated. I had these in the freezer actually. These are leftovers. And again, check the description for ingredient list and measurements and you know the other recipes to help you that I'm working with today. Oh, this smells so good. And it's oh, a great way to take a tough cut of meat and make it tender. And here's the plate and it smells and looks amazing over here I made this is avocado and green salsa blended together and I added a little bit of scallions chopped scallions into the mix and that's the salsa I'm gonna use for the meal I think it's an easy recipe now if you're working with thicker cuts of meat or beef you'll have to pound them thin but these were already sliced thin so it's gonna be tender so good I hope you give this recipe a try. I hope you like it and thanks for watching.